I don't know why they don't want to come clean and tell all of us that, one, they want to go and borrow for the purposes of infrastructure. In fact, we have said time and time again that we are not against any government trying to develop our infrastructure. But let me also assure you, but we actually care about the cost of that infrastructure and we care about the amount uh, where you are taking the money from. And we care uh, to, we don't want any attempt to hide public fund. But clearly, we are, we are seeing an attempt by this administration to hide public fund. An attempt by this administration to hide the public fund. And you know something? Something instructively, something actually hit me today. In the bills of quantities that my colleague may be talking about it um, briefly, bills, they should have actually done um, what you call value for money. We were told that they are going to do value for money after approval. From Parliament. From Parliament. And you know something, and that is why I looked at the document again. Normally, any time we say we'll do value for money after approval, we insist that you have a line item as part of the condition precedent, the CPs, that you add value for money. But in this agreement, the condition precedent excludes, excludes value for money. So it means the loan will be effective, drawdown will be effective, even if you don't do value for money. So it's not mandatory. Why is, is it in the agreement? Oh, look at the, look at the condition precedent. And there's no value for money in the, in, in, in the condition precedent. There's no value for money. All the CPs here that I've read excludes value for money. There's nowhere in the agreement that you see value for money. You see, it, it, it hurts. And, and this is a major concern. And my brother, I also point you to something. Look at the analysis, analysis of the agreement. You see, you have here forms of notice of assignment. What this simply means is that Sino Hydro, after going to borrow from a bank called International Commercial Bank of China, ICBC, they are going to, Sino Hydro is going to borrow from them. They are going to assign their entire right to the bank. And this is a copy. This is the assignment document. Okay, I, I get you. You see, but, and look at this. Notice of assignment of debt. They said it's a debt. They are saying it's a debt. And look at what is there. Okay, so that part of scene talks about the contract agreement for construction and rehabilitation of solitary roads and interchanges in Ghana. And it talks about the date to be inserted in there between you and us within the period. And they refer to the deferred payment agreement, which you passed yesterday, actually. And uh, the second one is also as amended from time to time. We also refer to deferred payment. Also, terms and expressions defined as uh, construed in the deferred payment shall have the same meaning. We hereby notify you that we have entered into an account receivable financing agreement, pursuant to which you may assign to the name in this case um, what you wanted me to take note of. All our rights, interests, benefits, and all claims under or to I, all party, all of party parts of the payments by you under EPC contracts and the deferred payment agreement and any or the claim or all the claims to which we are entitled to for the deferred including the debts owed by you to us as set out in the IPCs in accordance with the EPC. So your point is that they are admitted some debts. There is a debt and then look I'm not uh, let me point you to something. Look at the acknowledgement of the notice of assignment and what the Minister of Finance is saying. Okay. How to acknowledge it. They okay. are acknowledging a debt. No, let me get this straight. It says that the part where acknowledgement of notice of assignment, the assigned debt will be become due and payable from us, uh, what we call in accordance <laughs> with the provisions of the EPC, the deferred payment. But is it not okay? So when there's a batter, how do you call the terms of exchange? If you do something for me, I have to actually do uh, what uh, pay back. Is it not supposed to be paid uh, with the box site? Have you seen a batter that? Doubt? Have you seen a batter that we have a commitment uh, commitment fee, management fee? Interest rate in a butter agreement. Comm and, uh, commitment, uh, fee. And commitment fee, interest yes. rate, uh, 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 arrangement fee, uh, uh, management but, fee. Sorry, are these not all as part of butter? Is this not really supposed to be between Sino Hydro and the Essen Bank where we told they are getting the money? Is it not really? Sino Hydro what is, supposed is, to know is, from is, this? is not borrowing from the Exim Bank, unfortunately. Really? Sino Hydro is getting the money from. Uh, what do you call International Commercial Bank of China, ICBC. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they are actually going to assign their responsibility, and that's how buyers credit works. No, but their is that, responsibility mm -hmm. is it not to that bank they, to deal with the government. Is, is this part of um, interest and in all of this supposed to be applying to them so that Sino that's getting the loan from them will not run at any cost that's no. lower than its own? No, it, 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 it doesn't work that way. You see, the thing is clearly a loan. 
the okay. government is I, I only your trying point. to I'm run sure, away from, I'm from sure that. I'm sure when you get your final response yes. from the IMF, that can be clarified. Yes. But my concern is, you talking about commitment fees and also management fees. You get the impression that this is way too high. It's very high. And I'm asking, way too high compared to exactly what? Yes, and I've given Which you an example. Agreement? I'm giving you an example. Okay. Government of Ghana recently, um, not too long ago, under NDC, engaged the China Development Bank, which is the like uh, you can compare that to ICBC because mm -hmm. they are all commercial banks. They don't lend concessional loans. The Exim Bank gives you concessional loans. Okay. Okay. Bias credit on concessional loans. The CDB, under the CDB, also a commercial loan. Government, the all in cost is 4.1. 4. 1. 4. 0.15% to be precise, under the CDB agreement. That was passed in 2011. That's the major Chinese loan that we've had in this country. Apart from that, so you can compare that to the loan we are getting from the ICBC. The ICBC loan, of which Sino Hydro is fronting on behalf of the Republic of Ghana, is attracting interest all in cost of 7.7%. So you see the disparity. I see. That is how huge it is. So you are talking of interest in excess of 3.5%. 3.5% additional. But and that is what I'm saying. 2011 and 2018 are really different But you see, you see, you see in, any case, in any case, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy um, yesterday as part of the debate, when I raised the issue, the Honorable Dr. Akotose as part of his debate considered that even the Minister of Finance himself considered that it is an expensive loan and further to the discussion that we are having, they will look at the possibility of renegotiating it. It is in the hands of I didn't I say that. I get your point. So the loan, even the government deep in their hearts. So you say government they is know, they, they know the possibility of yeah, renegotiating yes, they, 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 they said it. You see, thank me, said that too. I appreciate your concerns. We, I know where you are coming from. But you see, we can only renegotiate it after the concerns have been listened to. And he said he's a listening government, so he's going to. Well, whether they are listening government or not, we are waiting. But the Minister for Monetary Evaluation did not put together this loan. No, he didn't. Uh, yes. But he's a, member of, he, minister, he's a right? member of cabinet. Yeah, okay. He's a member of cabinet. He can only so, raise it at cabinet. So, so probably he, he may have um, had some input, I'm not aware. But in fact, in all fairness, I wasn't at the finance committee um, on last Saturday when they were discussing that. Okay. But last Saturday, what happened was that apparently, and Dr. Koto has even said it on the floor, that the finance minister had signaled at the committee that they know that this is very expensive loan and they are going to do something about it because they know certainly will raise concerns about it. I get your point. So, so, it, so the, you're waiting for them to come in with yes. this. Is there another issue you raise with this apart yes, from the I have another issue. commitment, management, and yes. the other things that yes. have they cost issue. around it? Yes. I'll show you something. The underlying collateral, what we are saying is that government of Ghana is going to open an escrow account for the purposes of collecting the bauxite revenue and using it to repay. And at any point in time, he said that the interest will be paid twice annum, uh, twice per annum. So it means by annual. You okay. pay every six months within the year. Now, what they are telling us is that, what they are telling us is that, at any point in time, you should have interest two times in that escrow account to be able to settle it. So if you start from year one, you should have, let's say, one whole year interest in the account. First six months and the second six months. I see. Okay. And in the agreement, they are telling us that, one, government of Ghana um, should mobilize uh, re uh, bauxite revenue and pay into account. And if they don't have bauxite revenue, they should look for tax revenue and pay, pay it into the account. Two questions here. Tax revenue is public fund. Yeah. One, bauxite revenue, the revenue is public fund. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. So, so, yes. so per the Constitution, Article 181, if you use public fund to service any debt, any liability, that is a loan. Article 181. And then you can read from Article 181 to Article 1811 to Article 1816. It's there. Obvious. The question here is that even the bauxite revenue that we are talking about, the bauxite revenue we are talking about, the government has not put in any form of infrastructure in place for us to be sure that that revenue is coming in. Any form of infrastructure. You need to have access routes. You need to have electricity to the site. You need to mine it, set up a refinery, refine the bauxite to an alumina, find an off ticker, sell to, and pay for the debt. All of that is not in place, and nobody is talking to us about it. When you have to ask 
Which part of but the bauxite I, I, they are going to mine? They say they don't know. Are Nobody is there. commencement there. places. We know where bauxite is in the country. So what are sort of not commencement engagements? Chief, you yes. are engaging a liability. But yes, but we don't have money to put up this no, infrastructure. No, the money but, doesn't come. What is, if, if it doesn't come, that is my question. If it doesn't come, if you fail to put the infrastructure in place mm -hmm. for you to be able to get the revenue, this debt, you cannot service it. You cannot service it. It's not too early to it, raise It is not too matter. early. It's, it's not too early. Ideally, uh, what would that uh, be your perfect timing see, for this perfect infrastructure timing, to be put in place? The perfect timing is one, you put the infrastructure in place. When? Now. As in now. how many months now. before you the official to, see, parliament approval? You see, it doesn't take one day to mine bauxite. It doesn't take one day to put the infrastructure in place. Yes, to surprise right. you that you will need maybe three, four years plus. In fact, you will need even more. That means even two, put actually. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Well, but two years, what sort of infrastructure have they put in place? As we speak, nobody has been able to come out to tell us that they've given concession to A or B. And they, have, they, are, they are failing to tell us that they are going to put infrastructures in place A or B, whether road infrastructure, electricity infrastructure, and whoever is building the refinery. It doesn't take one At least we know that they have actually taken concession from what they call yes. the Exxon Cubic and Coal. That means oh, they are available to be given out. Oh, I, I, that, that is not the case. I'm, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that because I know the matter is before the Supreme Court. I yeah, know the matter is before because Exxon Cubic won the case at the High Court and then the government appealed. It's the government that appealed and went to Supreme Court. Yes. So the government, if the government, um, I, I heard the government saying that they've won the case. If they've won the case, why is that they are going to the Supreme Court? Yeah, yeah the uh, Supreme Court. The point you're making. So here. let's wait for Supreme Court to make yes. the pronouncement but, but on the matter. To be yet. fair, yes. uh, both sides, sites, there are about four of them, four major ones. Yes. So, it's three. Yeah. It's three. Okay. It's three. We have one at um, um, Awas uh, Awaso. Mm -hmm. It's incumbent. Okay. We have the one at Yini Yini. Mm -hmm. that we are talking about, the Eston yeah. Quebec one that is now at the Supreme Court. And we have one at Kibi, Chebi. And you know, the Chebi one, the grade is so low. Low grade bauxite. Everybody knows this. So that's only in you know, Low grade. There. It's only in you know, that is available. That's low grade bauxite. So you cannot use that for the purposes of turning it from alumina to uh, what do you call uh, a bauxite to an uh, alumina. So I'm more concerned about the sources of revenue to pay this debt. As in, you are not sure we'll be able to raise the money within the period that the box is supposed to come into place and pay them? I'm not sure that we'll be able to, one, raise the money. Two, I'm not sure that we are putting the needed infrastructure in place to bring the revenue. I'm not sure how they are going to classify it, whether as, uh, as part of government revenue and it's going to feed into the fiscal. So long as they are not recognizing it as debt and then the expenditure is not going to feed into the budget, they're hiding something. What they are doing... I can tell you, it's creative accounting. Creative what, accounting. what do you mean by creative that? Creative accounting in the sense that they want to hide, uh, run away from public debt. Uh, run away from the expenditure That's so that GDP. it boosts. Yeah, debt to GDP boost. Because what will happen is that this expenditure, mm -hmm. this expenditure should feed into the fiscal as an expenditure. And then it will increase the deficit and increase the primary balance and add to the debt. They don't want to see that. That's what they are doing. And we all know where it's coming from. Well, it's interesting how this conversation is supposed to go, but I need to wrap up quickly with you on this matter. We'll go into the detailed programs and projects they seek to do across the country. The final point I want to ask from you is that, so you in the minority cannot do anything about this. When you say that government is willing to look at the cost of all of this, is government willing to listen to all the issues you've raised and perhaps make amendments, or is it a done deal? You see... I think the earlier this administration realized that the NDC and the minority in government has a major stake in the, in, in the governance of this country. The yeah, the, the stake really involves making sure that government looks bad and remove them. No, the, with your good the self. stake, you see, my brother. But if the government stays see, in office for the next brother, two or four attempts, yes. the NDC really let, will let be me tell you, without any structures. I, I am a Ghanaian first. And a member of the NDC second. That's what politicians say. No, really. that's not what about. You see, when this country succeeds, yes. okay, mm -hmm. I succeed as a Ghanaian. When this country looks good, I look good as someone who have had the privilege to serve in a high office as a deputy minister of finance or to serve this country as a member of parliament for three times at the minimum. So forgive so, me. What I'm saying is Was that, it possible that you could yes. have raised these concerns, mindful of how interested you are in our development at committee level, or, oh, I did. more importantly, with the ministry without doing it on the floor of parliament? I before did. Before all in sundry. I did. You see, 
I raised all of these concerns and more at the Finance Committee. But this government has an attitude in Ethiopia. We don't care. We don't care. You, we will talk, but we will listen to you by the air of the year for Nijuma. This is what is happening. This is what is happening, unfortunately. Maybe their argument is superior to what you said. No, what's the, what's the argument? What's the argument? Now all of them are, of all of a sudden, they've changed their tone, calling it um, a, a loan. Daily Guide. The government... <laughs> so, ma Daily ma Guide is not... Daily Guide. Government map. <laughs> Daily uh, Guide one is said not... That, uh, one <laughs> said that we want to sabotage the agreement by <laughs> writing to IMF. Now they've come to our conclusion today in their front page that it's a loan. Thank you. Now, thank you so it's much. Uh, we'll take a break. When we turn, we'll continue with a deeper conversation on the exact projects that this amount of money is supposed to be spent on. We're not looking at the finance part. We're not looking at the pure finance talk. We're looking at the roads, which areas, how much is costing us to put up these roads under the big Sino Hydro deal, which is almost $600 million after this break. You welcome back. This is Upfront. My name is Raymond Alqua. In the first part of this conversation, in fact, today, we sought to find out from the minority in Ghana's parliament exactly what are their concerns with this Sino Hydro deal. Yesterday, they dealt with a part of it. They're continuing today. And the crux of the conversation is that they are virtually opposed to many parts of this deal. First, they said the arrangement, as you heard me talk to the Honorable Kessler to force on the Finance Committee about the arrangement was not in the right taste. Two, it talks about fees that are supposed to pay on, the, on that. And three, whether or not we are getting value for money in this country. He also says that we are even unprepared with our box size structure to get it working the way it ought to work. In fact, he said government had admitted some of these issues. And so we were also seeking to find out what else can be done to make sure that we get value for money. But now, let's go into the specific road projects and specific projects that the amount of money, almost 600 million, is supposed to be used for. What would mean to do this is the Honorable Member of Parliament and also the ranking member on the Rose Committee of Parliament. The Honorable Kwame Abuja, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Raman. How are the people of Adaklu doing? By his grace, we're surviving. It's not very easy under President Akufuado. Adakul is one of the poorest areas in the country. Yes, I agree. It's uh, one of the poorest areas, uh, lacking a lot of infrastructure. But we, we've made some progress, but, especially but, in education. But you are opposed to government going for money to improve infrastructure? Not at all. Uh, the, the NDC is noted for infrastructure. Indeed, one of the things that we were mocked uh, uh, by, by the NPP is that we don't eat infrastructure. Infrastructure is not all that you, you need and all those things. But uh, we are happy that today they've done uh, electricity and are now bent on doing infrastructure unfortunately uh, by their uh, notion at all cost that is what we are opposed to ndc in fact on uh, this week alone i can tell you there were a couple of loans that came to parliament and people actually forget how much loans we take on a daily basis mm. under this government and guess what including uh, uh, myself we supported it when they decided to resuscitate uh, the uh, CDB loan and all those things, whether it's the landing site, all those things. We fully supported it because we reminded them they opposed it and said it wasn't good enough. Now they brought them all back, but we stuck to our principles and supported it, unlike them. So we are not against infrastructure development at all, but it's all about the details of this particular CDB Yes, loan. we're going straight to it and get to know the clear-cut details in all of this. Yeah. So many of people in this country knows that Accra Town Roads, Kumasi Town Roads, and many wonderful infrastructure developments are supposed to come along with the CBD. Exactly what are your concerns with this? Well, first of all, let me explain something. And if anybody thinks that because we're going to get uh, the, the amount of money that is actually going to do the construction, it's just uh, around $490 million. Okay. The 646 million you see, uh, just as uh, my colleague Honorable Atufosen said, about 150 million dollars of that is just the charges or the cost of borrowing the the, the, the money. So the 490 million, we are saying that the accruals to road funds in two years is equivalent to all the, the noise we are making about uh, 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 the, 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 the Sino Hydro. So basically, if we, 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 we want to look for resources to develop our road infrastructure and other things, there are so many other ways of doing it instead of this expensive method. And let me uh, get into uh, the details. As you are aware, uh, the, 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 the government forced, and well, they have the numbers, they passed the, uh, the, the, the financial part uh, yesterday in, in, in the House. 
Uh, they intend to build about 441 kilometers of road and two interchanges. My brother, the cost of the, this project, including the interchanges, is about 646 million. If you take the, the interchanges, one at Tamale and then one at PTC around about at uh, Takradi out, which is 46 million, and then another one, 68 million, you come to a figure, if you divide by the, the kilometers they ought, they, they're supposed to do, you are looking at a kilometer of this road running way above $1.2 million. This will be the most expensive road project ever done in Ghana. There's no doubt about it. And guess what? Much of this road is road not even projects. asphalt. Not, not interchanges. No, I've, I've, I've already told you that I've taken the interchanges out of it. Specifically, not necessarily in this case. Which, okay, which so one? hold on. Yeah. Are we dealing with road projects as in ordinary roads a kilometer without interchanges? Or exactly, with interchanges? exactly. The, the figure I gave you of 1.2 million does not include the cost of the interchanges. The cost of the interchanges is 46 million, one, uh, which is the one at Tamale, and then okay. 68 million, the one at uh, Takradi. That has been taken out. So if you take the six, uh, 646 million, uh, you take out about 115 million, you divide 441 kilometers by it, it's way above uh, 1.2 million dollars. And I'm saying that much of these roads are not even asphaltic uh, uh, surfaces. What is it It's just ordinary road, the, the, the double seal. The, I mean, so the one that the ordinary person will call Kota Road. That's what it is. And that is why we're saying this will be the most expensive road. And there's a reason for it. Uh, sorry, you're comparing it to which one? Because I've heard this one million. Okay, let okay. me tell you this. Uh, not too long ago, when the government of the NDC noticed that cocoa still remains the backbone of this country, we decided to leverage on the cocoa receivables and build roads related to cocoa in this country. One of those roads that I keep crying for every day is if you go to Prestia uh, and then Samri Boy, a, a, a road network of about 46 uh, kilometers. My brother, the, it's, it's, the, it's the area in the country with the highest production of cocoa per square kilometer. The NDC awarded this road under the Cocoa Road uh, project. This road has been suspended because when NPP came to government, you are fully aware that they, they cooked up a story and said that the Cocoa Road projects were, were, uh, the projects were inflated. Some of the roads didn't even exist. And you are aware that I've been asking for the report of the Cocoa Road till today, which doesn't exist because what my brother, they lied. There was no, there was no question about that. Under those uh, projects, a kilometer of road ranged between 1 million and then 2.1 million Ghana City. Okay, so Ghana City. That's Ghana City. Clarity on. So, this is dollars, 1.2 million dollars. 1.2 million dollars. Million dollars. So, okay. under the NPP, a kilometer of an ordinary road is over 5 million Ghana City. That can only be an attempt by somebody to cook up figures and chop. If I want to put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a plain language, that is what we are talking about, that these roads are too expensive. My, bro, my colleague has already explained to you, why would we be against a construction of road? But we are thinking that things have not been done properly. Let me give you an, another example. This is an EPC contract. EPC, Engineering Procurement Construction. Okay. In other words, this contract, the, 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 the developer, which is in this case Sino Hydro, is supposed to do the, the studies, design, construct, and commission. But guess what? If you look into this document, you can see bills of quantity. And why do they have bills of quantities? Because all these roads have already been studied thoroughly. Uh, how do you call it? The bills of quantities derived because the agencies, whether it's feeder roads or highways, have done this all over the years. So we are attempting to pay an EPC contractor to do a what survey and design before. what has been done before. So okay. it is something because these are here. Are the, look, if, if this were like ballpark figures, like round figures, but they go to quite a great extent to be precise. Look, a, 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 a mass concrete in base footing uh, and, and ground slab thickness 150 to 300, 2201. You don't do that if you are not sure of the quantity. It means that you know the design. So we are believing that to start with, somebody knows that we ought not to be paying Sino Hydro for any study and design. But they have put it in here that that is what we're going to be doing. Now, let me get this straight. Yes. Put it, and, and let me appeal to that, not the NDC member yeah. thinking, yeah. but the architect in you. Yeah. If you really are talking about road construction, yeah. the cost may differ yeah. from place to place. There'll be Perfectly. variations. Perfectly. And 
And so when they give you specifically $1.2 million, yeah. exactly what detail did they give you to support that claim? So it's not made to look very simplistic and say, well, we had this amount previously, and now this is how much you want to construct this. Well, the only reason that you tell me a cost of road, a road that cost maybe between 1 million and 2.1 million Ghana CD will become over 5 million. The only reason that can be is that then the country's economy has become so bad that the, the exchange rate has become so poor or the cost of materials and everything have more than 100% gone up. And is that the case we are trying to say here? No. But if you look critically into the document, there are things, apart from the fact that I told you, things don't add up. If you take, for instance, let me give you, give, this one is a, a Ufuansi, Ufuansi Kuma Akimoda uh, a Brim, mm -hmm. uh, a road of uh, 38 kilometers. It's called Lot, lot 9. In that project, it says what? I, I, I mean, the, uh, the first part of the bill. Specify the requirement. Uh, provide for clients project management services such as residence and office accommodation for engineer staff, site visit and meeting, uh, meetings, vehicle and other things. $720,000. I can give you a two-bedroom house for $50,000. Not... Not even in a France, but even in a you, It's not a specification that are being used in this case. So, see. No, I, no, hold, hold yes. on, hold on. The reason yes. I can tell you this is that mm -hmm. you're not going to build a luxury house for a site work because it's temporary work. Yes. So, so, so I'm, and I'm telling you that you can get a two bedroom house for $50,000. So, what is the point of what is all this $750,000 supposed to be? Doing? And you go for it. Obtain land in, uh, 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 in consultation with the client to set up contractors, site camp. Six hundred thousand dollars in Ufansi, a side camp. Ufansi, not easily gone. But I don't know how big that's supposed to be, right? Well, it's, it's, uh, unless you want to tell me they need a side to what? What are they going to launch? A, 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 how do you call it? A spacecraft? No, but you see, again, I want us to take it yeah. in the way that ordinary people are doing very well to, not to give reasoning no, to no, it. No, no, it's not, not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only fair yes. that this does not just become what it's too huge. It is. But <laughs> the justification is this. How big is this site plan, site camp going to no, be? No, the way to say it is, how big is this project? 48 kilometers. Take your time. So this is just sorry, from sorry, here sorry, to sorry. what? I want my questions answered. Yes. How big is this site camp going to be? Has it been detailed there? No. You don't know the details? No. But I, 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 can tell you why, I, I can tell you why. Because if, you want, if you're building 46 kilometers, you don't need a 10 square kilometers of land to be able to. What do you want to, want to do here? You want a site compound that you can haulage materials, chippings, yes. bitumen, fuel, uh, some uh, 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 reinforcement, iron rods, some space for workers to stay. That's it. You're not, you're not looking for a place to play football. You're not looking for a place to, to, to farm. That's not what you're looking for. So as far as I'm concerned, maybe a, 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 a three acres of land, four acres of land, would do for this particular project. What has been the justification to you about why they had to spend this much on that? When we looked into this, and, and, and one thing hurts me seriously about this, um, we are politicians. I am aware, and quote me, I am aware, that much of the figures here were done in a hurry. I have full confidence in my colleagues who work what, under the agencies. What, what, the, what do you mean by that? What I'm trying to say is that it's on record, and quote me, that... A few of the controversial things that came to Parliament recently, we are told emanated from the office of the Vice President, whether it's uh, uh, the Ghana Post GPS. So when you say we are told, who are you referencing? When we are told. Yes. And I what can give you an example. For told. instance, when sorry, the... Sorry, yeah. specifically. I'm talking about this project, not Ghana Post the, Oh, GPS. this project, this project. In fact, okay. who told you okay. that it was done in a hurry? That's the specifics I want. My sources tell me it's what's done in a hurry. Who are these sources? Oh, I have my own sources. Yeah, but I mean, clearly, I demand My sources proof. are the ministry. I demand strict proof. Yes, my sources... I can't quote your sources to absorb let me, let me, me of let me tell you. you let making. me tell you. Yeah, because, my colleagues, see, my colleagues are the ministry, are very diligent. Honorable. They will never put these figures here. Uh, okay, so let's be clear. Yeah. They didn't do it, but they know somebody else did it. Yes. In a hurry. Yes. And you are saying that you trust that information so well that it yes. is supposed to be... and safe. I can prove it to you now. When we were doing the zip line uh, 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 thing, the, another controversial one that came from the, pre uh, the vice president, of which he's not afraid to put his reputation on it, there were people from his uh, office who were sitting in a meeting with the uh, health committee. 
And I'm telling you that the caliber of people... Sorry, if people sit in the committee with the health what, committee, what does it, what does it hold mean? Hold on, hold on. I, I this, project is, yes. this project is for, for Ministry of Health. Why should people from the, uh, the vice president office be sitting in a, 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 a committee or parliament meeting? I think is this to cajole them to do something. And I'm saying that the caliber of people... So who are those in, in the meetings? The, 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 who, who are those? I'm, I'm not going to mention their name. It's unfair to mention okay, their sorry, name. Sorry, but you see, I would... And then they will make the claim because I would insist oh, that you see, give me some see, specifics. See, see, no, sorry, honorable. I insist that you give me some specifics so it does not become like making generalized claims. I am surprised. No you, I am surprised it. you, a journalist, who always says that you have to protect your sources today, you are asking me to declare my sources. But you are telling me that a committee meeting of parliament yes. had people from the office of the yes. vice president. How is that secretive? I'm How does that require no, you to no, protect it's, sources? I didn't say, I didn't say secretive. I'm just giving you... So I'm asking you to name the people who are in the vice president. I wouldn't name, name them. I'm not going to name them. So it's very possible that they were not necessary in the first place. That's, that's fine. That's your view. And I can, I, can take, I can take your view. And I'm saying that, that one of the reasons I thought this document couldn't have been put together by my colleagues, civil engineers, uh, and then county surveyors at the, uh, at the, the ministry is that some of the figures, especially those belonging to Urban Road, are outrageous. There's no way any of my colleagues would do this project and at, attempt to make government pay $1.2 million, over 5 million Ghana City, for an ordinary third road. They were not going to be able to do that. That is why I'm telling you that this project, NDC as a minority, is not against building of roads. We are just saying that value for money must be obtained. And uh, in Parliament, they came up with this uh, uh, interesting proposition that Parliament always approves loans and then we say we should go and do value for money, which is partly true. But this year, even this year, when we're doing the quiet district hospital, the completion, it came with full value for money report attached to it. So why are we not doing the right thing? Why are we quick to jump to re and make reference to the, the things that we have done wrongly? And I, I am not even afraid to say that we've done something like that, even under the NDC. But we are in 2018 going to 2019. Should we be repeating those things? I don't think so. Government would have the full uh, cooperation of NDC As in going to develop... Ahead, going ahead with a uh, project and seeking approval without value for money assessment, that's what you mean by NDC has done the same before. Yes, we have, done, we have done the same so before. I, I just and I'm being... No, honest. once you moved on, just yes, want to be clear yes, that. Yes, yes. Okay, but yes, yes I yes, get your point. Yes. So now, this is something you are raising. Yes. You raised it at a committee level. Yes. And what was their response to it? Did they reject it? Did they say it was not reasonable? In fact, they've ignored a lot of things about this project. When I asked, for instance... Have you got even to, bor to borrow $600 million? Have you even got uh, uh, Attorney General's uh, oh, okay, uh, a legal opinion on all that you are doing? No, we don't have legal opinion. We'll get legal opinion later. Have you got any indication of what PPA thinks about this? No, we don't need it. Who says you don't need it? This is government money. Even if you borrow money, like my colleague said, even if it's money you have you donated to you for free, once it hits the government chest, it has become government money. We raised the issue about uh, uh, local content. They said on the master agreement there's something called local content for 30 percent. This the construction agreement doesn't have anything like that. And I, why did I raise that? Because I want to know what the local contractor is going to be able to do in terms of partnering to do this. So I'm looking for an opportunity for the local contractor. Now, there's nothing in this document like that. So all the basic things that ingredients that makes a contract valid and gives reference to the government to be able to fight back if the, con the, the Chinese contractor decide to play loose, uh, excuse me, not lose, to play tricks with us, all these things in the disagreement, the government have let them lose. In so other so words, it's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. Completely bad deal. Well, uh, the idea of building road is not a bad idea. This process is a bad idea. And all we wanted is withdraw this, go back, work on the issues we raised, even if you think we are, what we are saying is not right, go and check it again, okay. bring it back, we are with you. That's all it is. Okay. Let it not be said anywhere that NDC doesn't want roads built. We have been accused of building too much roads. How on earth could we stop I, I, it? That's your point. I mean, does government breach any rule, law in this country in putting together this particular document and asking you to approve it? Does the government breach any? I am not a lawyer, but I believe that when you want to do an agreement of this nature and you have clearly called it a loan, they said it a couple of times on the floor, and then you don't want the people to know that it's a loan, I think you are trying to hide something and it could be a breach at a point in time. And I believe... Okay, so it could be a breach of which specific regulation, I want to be clear. PPA is not... Uh, we don't have any opinion from PPA. We don't have a legal opinion. 
We don't have any uh, uh, issue about, uh, 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 how do you call it, uh, local participation and all those things. You can say that... And I agree, you feel strongly yeah. about these things. Yes. Uh, the natural question will be, why are you not protesting in courts? Oh, but we just, we just started the process. But you see, the first line of defense as an opposition party or a, a, a minority party is not to put impediments in the way of government. It's to reason with government. Yeah, I it's, to, it's to raise the, the thing. Mm -hmm. We are in the process of being ignored, ignored, ignored them, ignored them because of their numbers. Why are they ignoring? They are very reasonable, what they call the claims. And I understand them to be so... Well, it's difficult for me to understand that one because I was trying to ask them: Is it? Is it? Do you feel comfortable to pay five million for something that you call uh, two million? I've, I, I asked them this question, and I could see from the demeanor of my colleagues on the other side that some of them don't feel comfortable about it. But the truth is that many of them only saw this when it came to parliament. And so if they I ask you the specific people. You tell me that it's also source you want to protect. Oh, I, really, I can tell you I something. Heard, I've heard, I put this question. I've heard, I've heard the chairman of the finance committee say that they would demand that the right things are done. No, you see. You see, when you have, when you have this, when you, when, when you have this, hmm? sometimes let's be careful when we say things they will, de they will demand. When you have this agreement already signed, demand what? Let me show you the page. They have already signed this. And that is another thing we raise in Parliament that, why are you here wasting our time? Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. It's been signed. So what, what, are you doing, what are you doing in Parliament? But just yesterday, he said that the will insist on value for money or this for this sign of your project, saying that to him, it's not a big deal that they actually are going through the first phase without it. It will finally come in before all of these projects get to kick in. So, so when we have a value for money, we are, we are approving 646 million. Yeah. And the value for money says they should be made, it should be 300 million. But then you have signed a binding contract with you. Then the, the developer will just say that you have breached the contract. Because you know, there's nothing in this contract that says that after the value for money, if government finds that we have been over overcharged, we have the right to terminate. Okay, so, but, so, so sorry, for, forgive me. Okay. What he says is that we cannot start this project until you have a value for money audit, and he makes the point. And uh, he proceeds to say that um, auditing, of course, I mean, for money auditing, because this is like where is, that, where is that? Where is that? Where is that in this agreement? Now, I'm saying that he is stating that yes. as Parliament, as Finance Committee, they would insist that value for money is done because this is like going through sole sourcing. And that's the point he's making. No, the, uh, the, the reason is that if passed it, it was not even part of the resolution that was taken in Parliament. So what he told you was just a word of mouth. What was on the resolution that was passed, they did not include that. When you have a situation where a picture, they call it a, a picture is supposed to cost, a picture to take a picture to uh, augment. So, sorry, sorry. He says that after parliamentary appearance, we have to go do a value for money audit where the sums are revised. Where is that in this agreement? That is all I'm asking. Where in this agreement is it obligatory for them to do that? They should show me. They should show me. And that, that obligation says that when the value for money says but that... Yeah, there's no deal. There's no room for anything like that. No, I, I mean, it's not, there's nothing binding here. So even if there's a value for money that says that this project should be 300 million instead of 600 million, the, the Chinese developer can say that, look at your signature. You signed an You've signed on the dotted uh, line. Yes, I asked my colleagues, should we be happy to tell the people of this country that on one project, we are spending $141,000 on pictures just to take a side picture. Sorry, what do you mean by that? Yes. You see, uh, when you do projects like this, yeah. when you put in an interim certificate, mm -hmm. you ought to, because maybe the person... Vetting, show evidence. That's, yes, yes, exactly. I know I've gone to your site. Exactly. So you have to show evidence. So that. You, you sh uh, which we all do in the industry. Yeah. But on one project, $141,000, and which works so, out... Sorry, to prepare the portfolio that you present as part of your certificates, right? Well, I've, but the I've, way you're making it look I've, like just I've, taking pictures I have done, is, I have is done, quite simple. I've done certifications. Yeah. And even this week, I've done a certificate for a work. Mm -hmm. I don't know of a project like this that you take 1,000 pictures eh, for one certificate. And this is a two-year, three-year project. And I'm saying that to pay $141,000 just for pictures on this project, on one of them, we, when we calculated it, a picture was going to cost $60. That can buy your whole camera. I don't think my colleagues on the majority side want to sit and, uh, and, and endorse this. Not Maybe, the very best of cameras, let's yeah, be clear. Yes, eh? Not the very best of cameras, let's be clear. As that, the, in fact, this, you, you can get a phone that can take that picture. <laughs> and like that us. phone will not be, le it will be less <laughs> than $60. <laughs> you see, I, I don't want to... No, see, you're making it look like this is... You can... You see, it's not just anything that ought to be represented in this case. It is, my brother. Because on site... It's not to take a picture of somebody like you in a showbiz who look, need to look gl glamorous. It's just to say that this is concrete. Mm -hmm. This is a hole that has been filled. 
this is uh, uh, aggregate. It's not to say that they should see so you in all your hands on this. Yes, on one on, project. On, on just taking pictures. On taking pictures. And sorry, I mean, it's not a single stretch of road. It's different schools, right? Well, different road projects, right? I, I, I can I would repeat, repeat again. You're doing very well asking the, the right questions. But I'm saying that when it, when it works out that sometimes a picture costs $60, I believe either that is a mistake, okay. which they should just quickly admit mm -hmm. and rectify. Justifying it wouldn't wash because, you see... A picture, a frame of picture, can't be sixty dollars. What's the way forward? It looks like I don't listen to you. Well, then, then um, unfortunately, that would be the bad side of democracy. But we, on the minority, would have done our job by raising the right questions. And I can guarantee you, we have supported this government on countless occasions, including going to Parliament on the Saturday on which our party ought to be organising a national uh, election. We went to Parliament just to just to bend backwards to support this government to do things. That, that's happened. So, so when we do these things, you can only tell that we are ready to support government to pursue Ghana the development. Money. Sorry, Ghana will lose money, a lot of it, right? Yes, that's that's what it is. That's what you believe in. That is that is what it is. That's what's going to happen. But you sit by for us to lose the money. Well, I'm not going to sit back, and we're not going to sit back. In fact, we are grateful to your network, yourself and your network, for providing this opportunity for us to have this discussion. We believe that somebody watching this program who should question and say, is this being done in my name? Can I compel government, if not to do anything, to look at what Kwame and Ato came to say here? Have they got a point? Even if it's not entirely the best point, can we look into it? Even if it saves, my brother, $100,000, that is the size of a village clinic in Adaklo or Waliwali. That is very critical to this country. When we spend money, that ought to be used to buy ambulance, on, on, uh, on drones. When you spend money that is to buy, buy a, a, a GPS data that is free and you pay $2 million, that cannot be a government that is working in UNI's interest. That is a government who is doing Yenkiobia, leave them. And indeed, some of them have said in Parliament, we can say whatever we want to say, they will, they will approve it anyway. But we in the opposition, uh, the minority, would have gone home knowing that we've done our job. We have defended the position of the vulnerable people of this country. I'll take a couple of messages and write up on this conversation. And this one says, I don't know why, and Piero Prospero says, I don't know why Joy always holding the opposition accountable instead of the government. <laughs> I, I unfortunately don't have government within me here. And well, this one says, Raymond, don't let him off the hook. John Bambio, we need a proof. Politicians are fond of making sweeping statements. I'm running out of time. MPP and NDC always lies about these things. Philanto, Philanto is the one that put it out there. Well, folks... I need to go. Forgive me. Folks, we have to end it here. Thank you so much for joining us on today's edition of Our Front. Make time to join us next week, Wednesday and Thursday, for another set of wonderful discussions on the nation's development and the most important issues of the day. My name is Raymond Aqua. I had the Honorable Kesu Latu Fossin earlier in the day. Then later on, you heard the Honorable Kwame. You have your name, Govins Agboja, <laughs> joining us later on on this conversation. Thank you for being with us today. News Prime. Tonight on Joy News Prime, government finally withdraws controversial revised AmeriPower agreement and replaces it with a new one. The energy minister says is a whole lot better. Dagbong regent refutes claims by the Asantehene that he failed to cooperate with eminent chiefs mediating the Dagbong conflict. 
We'll bring you details of his letter challenging the claims by the Asante Hene. Two more flag bearer aspirants of the position National Democratic Congress pick forms for the upcoming presidential primaries after the deadline extension.